on accueille notre premier intervenant qui va répondre à la problématique « Comment la data science peut-elle bénéficier dans la prise de décision gouvernementale ?» On appelle M. Mohamed Yassine Smaïl. Salam alaikum. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, actually, I'm very pleased to be here and I just want to thank you guys for this opportunity. Uh, so, like, like the, she introduced me, um, Mohamed Yassine and I work as junior data scientist at Yassir and I'm here today to talk about how can data science be used by the government and companies in Algeria to enhance the decision making. But first of all, the most fundamental question that we need to answer is what is data science? And please uh, allow me to ask how many of you use data science to make decisions in your work. So whether you are professional, uh, student, teacher, uh, please r raise your hands if you do. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so actually if, so actually if you go uh, to Google this term, you will probably find many different definitions. And personally, the I joined what Cassie Kozirkov said, uh, and she defined data science as the discipline of making data useful. And this one simple sentence is the main core of data science. And by this we mean that we extract no information and knowledge to make decisions in a scientific manner. And why in a scientific manner? Because Data science is the combination of many subfields. Most importantly, computer science, mathematics slash statistics, and some, main, and some domain expertise, as shown by this popular Venn diagram. And although if we started to hear about data science like just maybe just one decade ago or a little bit more, uh, actually its roots go back further in the past starting by uh, John Tuke in, 19, in 1962, where he emphasized uh, the future role of computer science in data analysis. Then in 1977, the International Association for Statistical Computing stated its mission as to link traditional statistical methodology, modern computer technology, and domain expertise to convert data into valuable information. And this, again, brings us back to our definition. And in 1989, the first knowledge discovery in databases workshop was born, shortly known for KDD. And in 1996, the first time data science term is mentioned in the title of a conference. And from 1997 to 2003, many journals related to data science has been launched. And here we have a few examples of data mining and knowledge discovery, data science journal, and journal of data science. And of course, this is not an exhaustive list. And around 2005, we have seen uh, the emergence of analytics competition with the very famous example of Netflix prize when they offered $1 million to enhance their recommendation engine. And around 2000. Nine and up to today, data science has been and still is considered as one of the most important skills to have. So as data science started to be democratized, many institutions, events, organizations, and university degrees related to data science has been established, uh, most specifically in America, China, and Europe. So as Algerians, where do we stand when it comes to data science? And if we take a look at this world map from the recent AI index report in 2019, we can see clearly that the northern part of the world are the most, most, co most countries uh, controlling the AI, uh, at least they are on the competitive part. And we can see uh, clearly that most of African countries are not represented. So mm, this may be because 
there is no data available or they are not just communicating uh, their contribution very well. But we can still notice that Egypt and South Africa are on the emerging part. The African continent still calling up, uh, and here we can list a few examples, uh, like African Center of Excellence in Data Science in Rwanda, AI in Data Science Research Group in Uganda, Data Science Africa Organization Events, and School for Data Science and Computational Thinking in South Africa. So uh, it's very, actually it's very difficult to get some data about Algeria in this field. But this does not mean that we don't have any work related to data or in artificial intelligence. Uh, but uh, like we have just seen uh, through the map, uh, it still gives us an idea on where do we stand. So now I'm going uh, briefly through some few cases for governments and companies. Starting with the first example of public transportation. Uh, in India. So the problem that uh, the Indian government were facing, the, the Indian government was facing a very high demand uh, for its very small bus fleet and this pressure uh, caused the unexpected buses breakdown. So what, uh, so what did they do? Uh, they equipped the buses with GPS devices and IoT technologies allowing real time monitoring for transit and by consequences this uh, allowed them to alert uh, their commuters for any unexpected changes in time or roads. And they were also able to predict uh, bus, halted, bus halters to schedule maintenance sessions before even the problem occurred. So this gives us a kind of proactive approach. The second example is here in Algeria, uh, in the housing field. And actually this, this work was done by the members of the Algerian R users like uh, two years ago. And what we wanted to, to do is to give a kind of reference for pricing houses. So we extracted data from listing websites such as Wedknis El Korea. And we first did a uh, kind of exploratory data analysis to study the relationship between variables and we end up with building a predictive model to suggest an average price for buyers and sellers. And then it helped also to identify under or overvalued listings. Now in the business side, uh, more specifically in the telecom industry, so uh, the local uh, telecom operator and actually this is done here in Algeria, so it's not uh, it's not, it's not imp impossible to do this kind of stuff. Uh, and starting by the churn modeling. And churn here means then when your customers or, uh, or users stop using your product or service. So what you want to do here is that you, want, you, you, need, to retain, to, you need to retain them as much as you can. So they are using techniques, machine learning techniques to predict living customers. Uh, and to approach them in a proactive manner to, with, with, with very specific retention campaigns. Another example is the dual SIM customers detections to optimize upsell opportunities to avoid revenue cannibalization. And one last example in the telecom industry is behavioral segment to identify similar customer segments to provide personalized offers and optimize marketing budget. Always in the business side, uh, now for the mobility industry, uh, like uh, Uber, Yesir, uh, we have here an example of demand forecasting in a spatial temporal framework. So it's very important to know for uh, any given zone and in, and in uh, any given time, uh, how many demand will be there to keep uh, a balance between supply and demand and keep a kind of a good satisfaction for both riders and drivers. And very last uh, an example of fraud detection using anomaly detection techniques and unsupervised machine learning techniques, uh, obviously to limit some revenue loss. So why are these companies and governments are interested in implementing data science projects? 
And in fact, we are living in a digital world where every interaction is uh, data that is stored somewhere. And if we are able to analyze this data uh, and separate the signal from the noise, then we would probably uh, provide better service for citizens, uh, for the government, and better user experience for customers in the business world. So maybe through these examples and definitions and some history, some of you as business managers or government respons responsibles are interested in implementing data science projects. But the reality is we need to ask ourselves, are we ready for data science? And what are the resulting challenges that are facing us? And here, uh, this brings us to this kind this pyramid of needs that, uh, that is pretty much similar to the pyramid of Maslow in economy. And so if we are, uh, if we are willing to make data science project, we need to collect, we need first, we need to start from the bottom and collecting the data that is uh, relevant to us, whether from uh, login, mobile apps, sensors, external data, or any other data source that is relevant to your business or your work. Then we move upward uh, to, the, to the storage part uh, when we need to establish a reliable data structures, uh, pipelines, and make sure everything is running smoothly. Then next, the exploration transformation part, including the cleaning, anomaly detection, preparation, uh, feature generating, and, and actually these three parts are uh, these three parts are the most time consumer for any data science project. And next, we move uh, to the analytics part. So once we have the data that is uh, ready for analysis, we move uh, to the analytics part uh, using uh, some, some kind of exploratory data analysis, uh, simple algorithm first, and then we, we move to the advanced part with the, with the ABTC experimentation and uh, advanced algorithms, AI, deep learning, etc. But uh, th this is a pyramid is related to specific uh, use cases. So we, d we don't always need to, to, to do AI and deep learning to make better decisions. So what should we do in order to be a data-driven entities? The first of all, uh, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So knowledge is accessible. Uh, there are many interesting blogs, many uh, data influencers that are sharing their experiences, uh, many online courses. So we just need a connection internet and quite good level in English to, to be able to start. Then we need to invest heavily in data structures and human capitals. And uh, here by human capitals, I mean uh, hiring, hiring data engineers, data analysts, uh, IT guys, uh, and then data scientists. And again, uh, I go back uh, to, the, to the pyramid of data science needs. We need to identify ourselves on the pyramid and then try to expand uh, horizontally and vertically. So. Uh, so the most uh, the interesting part of this pyramid, we don't need to we don't need the, to uh, to start one phase at a time. So we can go simultaneously and expand uh, vertically and horizontally. And again, uh, we need to update uh, university programs and open data, especially in the public sector and to take in into account that best practices in data science are still being written, and we, sh we need just to uh, test many approaches and see what works best. And finally, I invite you to join uh, our community, the Algerian R Users face, uh, Group on Facebook, and even this is related to the R programming la language, we, we highly uh, encourage you to, to join us even if you use other languages. So thank you. <laughs>